My guest today, Terry L. Fossum, is going to show you an incredibly powerful way to not only set your goals, but to accomplish them. Not, not vision boarding and all the stuff you probably already read about, but a simple, I mean a really simple three-step process that is so clear, yet so effective, you'll want to put it into practice right away. He's a great storyteller. He brings lots of fun anecdotes along the way, and he even talks about addiction and the way that his, his uh, framework can work for addiction to alcohol, drugs, uh, social media, whatever it may be. It's the same philosophy. He also has some great, great experiences of being uh, on a game show, a survival game show, being dropped off in, in, on, on the uh, wrong side of Fiji and, and having to survive there for 30 days in this game show, which he ended up winning, um, and all kinds of other stories. So you're going to have a good time listening to this, but more importantly, you're going to learn a really powerful framework on how to set your goals and achieve those without going backwards. Enjoy. He is a number one best-selling author, a survival reality show winner, representing all of the Boy Scouts of America, a highly successful businessman reaching the top 1% in his entire industry, and his TEDx talk reached number two in the world at one point. His book, The Ox Cart Technique, Blueprint of Success, has helped people succeed in business and finally lose that weight or whatever it is they were trying to conquer in their life. He's even saved marriages. So we are going to talk about addiction. We're going to talk about all kinds of struggles and you know the everyday trials and tribulations that we have to go through. And his approach, this ox cart approach, I think you're going to get a lot. I know you're going to get a lot of value of out of. So without further ado, Terry, welcome to the Thrive More podcast. Roger, thanks so much for for having me on here. And right away, I want to compliment you on your approach to this and what you're sharing with everybody. Because it's not just business succeed, but it's <laughs> everything. So it's the mental aspect, it's the physical aspect. And look, if you're really going to succeed long term, you have to include those. So thanks yeah. for what you're doing for everybody out there. Oh my gosh, I, you're more than welcome. Uh, my pleasure. And I truly believe that a, you know, a strong body, strong mind, a strong mind, a strong body, you know, it, it, it all goes together. And um, people say, you know, you can't have it all. No, no, you can, you can, you just have to work yeah. at it. You just have to work at it. Yeah. Right. Um, so Terry, um, Based on your bio and doing some of my own research here, you have this really long list of accomplishments, uh, this envious list, but that wasn't always the case. And and if we go back, um, you talk about you know how you struggle with goals, you struggled, and you even reached this this low point in your life where things started to turn. Yeah, I think it's really important for the listeners, for me, to to hear what happened. Where were you? Where were you mentally? Where were you physically? What was that epiphany that turned this ship around that, you know, created the, the Terry L. Fossum we know today? Well, and that's, that's, a, that's an interesting way you said that because the Terry L. Fossum that y'all know, and that's what we say down in Texas where I'm from, we do yeah. say y'all and all y'all, um, is not the Terry L. Fossum that I know, okay, or that mm -hmm. I grew up with. And a lot of times we think we've got to have, you know, that silver spoon. We've got to be born into a good family or from a good place in the, the country or the world. I had none of that. So I want to speak to all those people to begin with. I was raised in literally the poorest city in the entire United States of America, a small wow. Texas border town by the name of McAllen, Texas. You've heard of it in the news. You've seen the border crossings, the cartels coming across, kidnapping people. You know, um, home. And don't get yeah. me wrong, I love my my hometown. I really, really do. But it could be a little rough growing up there sometime with the gangs and the drugs. In fact, I was on the wrong end of an assault rifle in junior high in my own wow. back alley. In my, it, I wondered if my next breath was going to be my last it, at 14 yeah. years old. In high school, my father, my dad, was killed. And before he died, one of the neighbors came up and said, I just want to make sure you understand something. Those three boys of yours, your three sons, not a single one of them is going to ever grow up to be anything. So that's my background. Oh so my for gosh. everybody out there with all the, the self-doubts and the fears and, you know, why would anybody listen to me? Or I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can make it. I don't, I don't know if I've got what it takes, et cetera, et cetera. Listen to me. Listen to me. You do. Okay. The past doesn't equal the future. You know that. But it's that struggle in between the two. 
that makes all the difference in the world. And that's what we're going to talk about here yeah. today. Does that does that yeah. get us yeah. to where you wanted to be so far, Roger? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, I would love to know, I think the listeners too, kind of your background. So I think you go into the military, right, at a, at a, at a younger age, and then you um, you decide that's not going to be your career and come out and just kind of walk, bring us up to speed, if you will, because then I want to talk about the reality show and I want, <laughs> certainly want to talk about your book and, and your principles. But, um, you know, let's let's talk about that younger Terry. You're in the military. And, and was the military a way out of McAllen? I've actually done business in McAllen. I've, I've been there. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'll be darned. Um, I'll be darned. Yeah. Yeah. And um yeah, not a yeah. Certain places you did not want to be at night, right? Like I, I went to my hotel and I stayed in my hotel the rest of the night when I was down there on, on business. But uh, great people, you know. Of course, like great everybody said, there's people. Some great I really people. do yeah. love my hotel, and the food's yeah, really good. Yeah. yeah. Um. But you know, why the military? Why you know? What, talk us through that. Your your younger days, if you will. Yeah, you bet. Well, uh, to begin with, I was able to get uh, a degree mm -hmm. in mechanical engineering from Texas A&M University. Now. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really good at it, but uh, I worked hard, and uh, and I got the degree. So I decided I wanted to get. I was in the Corps of Cadets at Texas A&M, okay. um, and All they right. taught me a lot about discipline. Yeah. And uh, then I put in. I said I want to go ahead and join the Air Force. Want to become an officer, and I, uh, I I put in for three assignments. You have three choices. So the first choice I put in for a mechanical engineering job in well Texas. My second mm -hmm. choice mechanical engineering in. Texas. Texas. And the third <laughs> choice, though, was mechanical engineering. You guessed it, in Texas. Now, the Air Force considered my options and threw them all away and gave me a <laughs> non-engineering job. I worked hard for that degree, man. A non-engineering <laughs> job in somewhere called Spokane, Washington. <laughs> and my exact no, well, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. My hometown. There. I know it. Know it, yeah. love it. Yep. And I was not. And my exact yeah. quote to the colonel that gave me the assignment was, that sucks, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I said, sir. But then I got up here and uh, learned, first of all, it's pronounced Spokane. Oh. And, um, and I met the people. I got into the community immediately. Amazing people. I got into the mountains up here. I fell in love with it. The Air Force job was fascinating in that I was spearheading a brand new career field in the entire Air Force. I was part of just 12 people in the first class. So when I got here to Fairchild, they're like, okay, what do we do with you? Now, I was what was called the adjutant for the 325th Bombardment Squadron. That's a nuclear warfare uh, squadron uh, during the Cold War. And they didn't know what my job was. Okay, I've got two choices here. Either I can stumble and fumble and go, well, nobody knows what my job is. I'm uh, Nobody, this sucks, man. I don't know. Or I can go, oh, let me tell you what my job is. I chose yeah. the latter of the two, yeah. and when, when given the choice, chose. And mm -hmm. you know, they well, do you need flight gear? Yes, I do. A form fitted helmet, and everything. Yes, I do. And I'll, I learned a, a huge lesson. I'll, I'll say this, so we can move on from here. I'm in battle staff one day during a nuclear war exercise. Now, this is the real deal. You've seen in the movies, battle staff, the big room, classified boards around, and we're preparing for a nuclear war. And I'm sitting around the table. I had a position at battle staff. Me. And I'm sitting there with a whole bunch of old war dogs, man, who had been there, who had done that. And uh, and they had the spice to prove it and the scars and the the look as well. And this bright, shiny new colonel came in who did not. And he's going to be, he's third in charge of the base. He sits down because he's going to be in charge of the battle staff for the next 12 hours. And he walks in. I'm like, oh, gee, here we go. You know, they're going to eat this guy alive. And he walks in, he dings the bell. There's a bell there when somebody wants to talk. That's the way you do it. He dings the bell, gets everybody's attention, because let me tell you how I run my battle staff. When you're in charge, take charge. Mm. He did, and it was amazing what the people's response was around him. From there, though, I started a little business on the side, direct sales business. And uh, yeah, I don't know anything about sales. I'm a nuclear warfare officer. I'm an engineer. We're not known for our personalities. And in the Nuclear warfare, nobody wants what you're selling. But I decided to give it a try. And, uh, well, let me put it this way. I sucked. I was terrible. <laughs> I was horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't. And I, listen, Roger, I failed and failed. And I tried and I failed. And I'd learned all the self-improvement I could. 
everything I could get my hands on. I mean, I am feeding my brain. I'd go to the seminars, the audio series, video, and books, everything I could on goal setting. And I tried and I failed and I tried and I tried for years, Roger, for years. And I failed. And I got to the point where I just couldn't fail anymore. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I, I gave up. And I walked into the restroom, into my bathroom, and I looked at myself in the mirror. See, he's right. You're never going to grow up to be anything. And, uh, no, wait a minute. No. No. No, damn it. For the sake of the memory of my dad, if nothing else, I refuse to let that son of a gun be right. And something happened right there at that moment. Something happened. Something clicked inside of me. To be perfectly honest, I got pissed off. Sure. And I got up and I brushed myself off. See, there's two ways I could have gone. We all know the direction I was going. And I could have made that choice. Give up. That's it. I failed and I failed and I failed. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. Apparently, I'm not supposed to go this direction. I'm never going to grow up to be anything. Or by God, you can fight back and keep fighting. I got up. I brushed myself off. And I started facing, you know, I got back at it. I started facing the same obstacles I did, the same setbacks and the nose and you're an idiot and everything else. But now I did it from a new perspective. Not what I was taught in goal setting. Not the dream boards, the positive visualizations, the unicorns and rainbows and, and all of that. But rather, I had something not to go just toward the carrot, but something to go away from the stick. Never grow up to be anything. Hmm. Not knowing that I was applying some Nobel Prize winning science we're going to talk about it in a second, it worked. It yeah. kicked me in the butt. It kicked me out of my comfort zone and into my conquer zone. And my whole world changed forever. This segment is sponsored by Rockbox Fitness Franchising. Take control of your destiny and join the boutique fitness revolution with Rockbox Fitness. If you're ready to make a real impact in your community and own your own business that empowers people to achieve their best life, then Rockbox is the opportunity you've been looking for. They provide comprehensive support from site selection, upfit, training, and turnkey marketing so you can open your studio with confidence and a strong recurring revenue member base. Visit rockboxfitness.com and click on franchise opportunities to learn more about this exciting venture in the fast growing boutique fitness industry. It's time to turn your passion for fitness and for business into a thriving venture. What was the industry? What were you selling? Um, and, and why start it, you know, in the military? Like, what's the background there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's an obvious transition from doing nuclear warfare. By the way, I was the executive officer for the entire group of nuclear B-52 bombers at that point. Um, each one fully loaded, approximately the sixth most powerful nation on the face of the earth. And we had many of them, classified number. So an obvious transition into what I was doing, which was Selling skincare through network marketing. <laughs> sure. It's related. Sure. Make, makes sense. Makes sense. I'm yeah. an engineer. Let's do that. Yeah. And, and of course, you know, you can, you can laugh at the industry all you want, call it crazy and all of that. And everybody did to me, you know, you're an idiot. Yeah. It's a pyramid game, blah, 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 blah. I chose not to believe them. You know, I know I'm never supposed to grow up to be anything. I know I've got no skills, but I know that I've got a work ethic uh, that's, really hard to match and I'm really stubborn and I learned, I learned from other people. So when I started applying what I ended up calling the ox card technique, when you talk about the science later, I started succeeding. I started building teams around the globe. People were coming to me going, Terry, what are you suddenly doing? I had, I had rooms full of people coming to listen to me and you know who I am. You know where I come from. All right. So I'm kind of tripping out and I taught them and it worked for them. And then we had, um, we started playing it to marriage because marriage is a goal or it should be 50% fail at. And I started getting these emails, you just saved my marriage. And one of my audiences was this international weight loss coach. And she started applying it to weight loss. She freaked out, started applying it to all of her, her clients. And 
before I knew it, the thing had taken off. I decided to write a book, and that's the next chapter of our story. Yeah. I, so why why do you believe that, what is it, 90, 90, I think it's 92% of people who set goals come up short, they fail? There is a reason why. And that, that by yeah, the way, is was, I think it's the Scranton, University of Scranton study uh, that came out and said that. Um, here's why. And here's where we apply the, the, the Nobel Prize winning science. Okay. In fact, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, let me, quick. Quick background, I started putting this into a book. But being an engineer, being a science geek, true scientific research is not trying to prove yourself right. It's trying to prove yourself wrong. Yep. So I had this concept that really seemed to work, but it didn't make sense to me. Why? Because I'd always been told, never look at the negative. So I started looking online, which is what we call research, he said. But the more I looked, the more I'm like, oh my God, wait a minute. I'm running into this stuff about framing and and prospect theory and all this. And I'm starting to trip out, man. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa. I can't really understand all this because it's above my pay grade. And I, I went up to my wife. I said, I might've stumbled upon something here. So I posted on my social media. I need somebody who, I, I need somebody at a high level that understands prospect theory. Got a lot of people, most of which I couldn't understand a word they're saying. One of them could. He did his PhD dissertation on prospect theory. I sent him my notes. And he said, Terry, you're dead on. To answer your question now, here's yeah. what happens. Prospect theory, which again, won the Nobel Prize when applied to economics, taught us that we will do more to avoid pain than to go toward pleasure. Let me say that again. We'll do more to avoid pain than to go toward pleasure. So no matter how much positive visualization and manifestation and dream boards and everything else that we do that I used to teach along with everybody else is not enough to get us out of our comfort zone. We associate pain with comfort zone. Anybody that's been in sales, been in any sort of thing where you have to produce, understand it's all about getting out of your comfort zone. We know what to do. It's sticking to it. Yep. That's what this does. It provides not just the carrot, but the stick yep. and kicks you out of that comfort zone to go into that conquer zone and it works. Yeah. I mean, that's FOMO and, and, uh, fear of loss is so much greater than, than the fear of gain. And I would, I've interviewed so many entrepreneurs and business people and very successful athletes on the show. And almost all of them will say I had a much, much bigger fear of failure. I, I'm, I'm in that group, by the way, much, much bigger fear of failure than this desire to, to be the best or win, you know, by default, you may be the best to win because you're running from the failure so, you know, so aggressively. Yeah. You got it. You get it. Yeah. You get it. Well, then talk about the the ox cart technique. Like if you can get it down to a technique, tell me about that, please. Or tell the audience well, about that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, folks. And let me tell you, I'm going to give you the synopsis here. Um, Perfect. Please, please go on to my website and check it out because the details matter on this. It really yep. does. So please go on there, check it out. Okay. Here's the deal. Three pages. It's all it is. Three pieces of paper. It's all it is. But they're very important pieces of paper. The first one you write down is what I call the failure scenario, your stick. And it's important you do this emotionally because emotion, not fact, is the driver of all action. If we create enough emotion, it'll get us to do anything. There's gobs of stories about exactly that. So I write, wrote out my failure scenario in painful detail. I do this for my marriage as well, et cetera, to where I look at that. And by the end of it, I'm like, there, there's no way in the world I'm going to let that happen. No matter, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that doesn't happen. And I'm feeling it. What does it take? Page number two, your daily action plan. This is your bridge from failure to success. That'll determine whether your future is your failure scenario or your success scenario. So that's the steps you're going to take every day. You're going to read the failure scenario, go, my God, I'm going to do it. You'll read the steps, go, okay, that's what I need to do. And then you read your success scenario. Here's how amazing it's going to be because I took those steps. You pour a little verbiage to put at the bottom of each one of those sheets. It's in the book. Problem solution format. You've already jumped on that. I read this. I, I internalize the problem. I see what the solution is. And now... I come out feeling great because I'm going to do it. Read in the morning, read it evening. And it's amazingly powerful. Hmm. 
Mm -mm. I actually, it's funny because I've, I've read more books than I care to admit on self-improvement, you know, goal setting, you know, habit creation, all that. And writing out the failure scenario is not one and I'm, you know, very familiar with fear of failure and FOMO and all, but, but, uh, writing that out in detail brings that pain back Bingo. and we will, we will move away from that pain. And that makes so much sense. I mean, that's, it's, it's so simple. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so simple. It's brilliant. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny you say that. And I was, I was very blessed. So the, the, the PhD that did his dissertation on prospect theory, yeah. he wrote the foreword for the book and, and he even put in there that Einstein said the genius is making something complicated simple something like that that's what terry Fossum has done in this book which i was kind yeah. of blown away at so yeah i yeah. love it well it's got to be understandable for us all yeah for sure so when someone reads the art the ox cart principle and they, they, they read it and they set it down as the author what is your hope what is your 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 desire that they do and i mean like the very next step they take after they finish your book they set it down on the coffee table what do you hope they do to know that you've actually connected with them? Don't sit her down at the coffee table. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the book actually takes them through all the different things, that, the goals that could be applied to. So business, trying to get your nest egg for retirement, even if you don't make much money, losing that weight, saving your marriage, having an amazing, whatever it might be, including addiction, which we can still talk about. But it gives you these examples of people and and actual uh, failure and success scenarios, things you can draw from. So while you're reading the book, I expect you to be filling those things out and writing them for yourself. This is a work book. It, it yeah. reads with a lot of fun stories and stuff. Well, some of them fun, but it's actually to get you into action while you're still doing it. I don't, dude, I'm not going to sell, I'm not going to make a bunch of money selling books. All right. It's about helping people get into action. When I, on my deathbed and I'm looking back at the people the emails that I've gotten, the people who have reached out to me and said, this is what the Oxcart technique did for me. That's when you sleep good at night and that's when you feel like you've got a fulfilled life and you've made a difference. Did I miss how you named it the Oxcart? Like, did I miss you say why it's named the Oxcart? No, um, and I probably don't talk about that uh, enough on here. The whole thing starts with a parable, the farmer okay. and the Oxcart. And in fact, if you uh, look up my TED talk, um, just Google uh, Terry Fossum TEDx and you'll find it. Um, okay. it you'll see that, or it's of course in the book or in my coaching, uh, but it's all about the carrot and the stick. So it starts with a parable again, to bring it down even to a, a level that a third grader could understand. You, you read that and go, okay, I get it. I get it why it works. So that's why the ox cart technique. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I love it. I love it. So let's let's dive into, cause you know, you've helped people lose weight. You've helped save marriages. You've helped people help, help people be a lot more successful in business, you know, addiction, including addiction to success, uh, addiction to alcohol, addiction to drugs, addiction to any vice, addiction to social media, whatever it may be, the world's full of it, right? Yeah. It's like everywhere we turn uh, and we're all facing those demons in one way or another. Yeah. How does, how do you use this technique to help someone overcome any one of those given addictions? Quick story. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here, I'm working on the book still at, at right here at my desk mm -hmm. and I'm writing the chapter on addiction, but I'm going, I don't know if I really want to include, it seems a little off subject to me. You know, I, my doorbell rings, I go up there to answer it. And it's one of my housekeeping team. It's like, oh, Mr. Possum, Mr. I'm so sorry to bother you. I left my favorite sweatshirt here yesterday. Do you mind if I look around for it? You know the house better than I do. Go for it, you know? Yeah. But something seemed off. She went beeline up into our, our bedroom area. I know where this is going. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I follow I follow her up quietly up the stairs. I look through. She's in my underwear drawer. So I make myself known. Your sweatshirt will not be in my underwear drawer. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was, I'm just, it was open. I was closing it for you. I'm about to go and say something. And she looks past me. Oh, there it is. There's my sweatshirt. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. I call my wife and I say, darling, I said, darling, was there another woman's sweatshirt by your side of the bed? To which my attorney wife said, if there was, you'd be the first one to know about it. 
condensed version. I, I, I call up her boss, say she's never going to be in my house again. She was stealing from me. Yeah. Next day they call up. She's in tears. She goes, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She tells me her story. She says, 12 years ago, I was in an accident 12 years ago. I got addicted to painkillers for 12 years. I've been stealing. Not even my husband knows. Nobody knows. I know how to help her, not enable her. Oxcart technique over the phone, just like this. Number one, you're going to prison. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. You're going, this is a felony. You're stealing my prescription pain meds. You're going to prison. Let us sit in just for a second. Unless. Action plan. Bridge time. You go to inpatient counseling, followed up by outpatient counseling, and I am going to check up on you and make sure you do. Thank you. No, 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 no. I'm going to follow up. Make sure you do. And when you do, then, carrot, success scenario. You can be free. You can stop lying to your husband. You can stop lying to your friends and family. You can stop lying to yourself. And Roger, as of this day, 12 years ago now, she's still clean. She's in the chapter wow. in my book that wow. is included now. What a blessing. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. We've, I've, I've had a house cleaner uh, when I lived up in Massachusetts who I, I could just, something was, I'd come home and and there'd be pills missing and then wow. Um, wow. and then i again i came home and her car was in the thing and i'm like what the hell are you doing here on a tuesday you don't come you come on fridays you know wow. and it's not even the same right week you know and you just start putting it together and then we started calling neighbors and said hey have you had any surgeries in the last year maybe had extra medicine and you put it, yeah go see if it's still there sure enough it's all gone all gone you know and and, and unfortunately you know that person we don't realize it but you know that that person is not doing it by choice they have a they have a, an addiction but um it's a very violating feeling you know when you realize that they've been rifling through all your stuff to to find it but i'm glad that she got help and i'm glad you helped her that's just that's that's incredibly powerful ox card technique i can take no credit yeah. this segment is sponsored by beam light sauna franchising are you looking to take control of your destiny and own your own business do you want a great brand in a rapidly growing market well, Beamlight Sauna is a nationwide health and wellness franchise with amazing opportunities in select markets. You can bring the power of infrared sauna and red light therapy to your community while you build a thriving business. Beamlight Sauna offers support that includes site selection, build out, even pre-launch programs and turnkey marketing so you can open your studio with a large recurring revenue member base. To learn more about business ownership and franchise opportunities in the fast-growing health and wellness space, go to beamlightsauna.com. That's B-E-E-M, lightsauna.com. And click on Franchise Opportunities to learn more. I have to learn, uh, Terry, about, um, you know, you've done so many things. One of your more unique accomplishments is you won a reality survival show and I, I just have to understand what that was and what did you do and how did you win it? Like, just if you can give us the, the synopsis of that, that would be fun. Grace of God, my friend. Okay. First of all, I did not apply to be on any survival reality show. I had <laughs> zero desire. I'm sitting on my computer. Too many stories are starting with I'm sitting on my computer here. Hmm. I get this email out of the blue. We're casting a brand new television survival reality show, pitting 10 of the top survival experts in the country against each other. While dragging along a complete novice who he's never even camped out in their yard before, and we think you'd be great. Now, let me ask you, Roger, you get an email like that, what do you think? It's spam. out of the blue. Yeah. It's spam. It's fake. I'm waiting yeah. for and send six thousand dollars to Nigeria. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it ended up to be true. And I told my wife, I really don't want to do this. Now let's let's uh, I'm cutting out a lot of the fun story sure, for, sure. for time safe for your podcast. But I found out I was going to be the oldest person on this entire show. My wife's laughing at me. So I was like, God, you're the tog. Tog, what's that? You're the token old guy, dude. Thanks, dear. <laughs> and they wanted me to be representing all the Boy Scouts of America while wearing my Scoutmaster uniform. So first of all, it's cute they got the old guy on there, but he gonna die. Now, yeah. oh, they got the little Boy Scout on there. He gonna die. And I'm against Special Forces guys. I'm against military survival instructors, fourth degree ninja black belt that I had seen on Naked and Afraid All-Stars, except for the fuzzy <laughs> parts, and the fat old scoutmaster. They teamed me up with um, pink and blue hair, fully tattooed up, tongue ring, atheist, admitted sex addict, online video gamer. 
<laughs> now, let's be fair. They come, the novices come up in a boat. They got all of us survivalists there. She's seeing all these young studs, you know, military mercenary and everything else. And the federal scout master, I, no chance we're going to win. No chance. The executive producer told me afterwards, but I got to give a plug for scouting here. Um, first of all, scouts, you know, know more than we think they do. And I, I came off and they were going, now I worked hard at a time prepping. That's a whole other story, but going, wow, I, I knew more than I thought I did. But also, we take people from all different backgrounds, race, color, creed, religion. We don't care. We don't care about their past. We develop their future. That's all I did with my partner. She was strong. We looked on the good side. She was strong. She was strategic. She was smart. I couldn't have won it without her. But by the end yeah. of it, we did. That is amazing. Where, where was it at? Where was it? Uh, like, what, what part of the world were you doing this in? It, it, it was on Fiji, not the nice parts. It's basically yeah. around where Survivor is being uh, filmed now every single uh, season. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. That's, how long was it? How long was the, the entire experience of actually, you know, from the time the game started to yeah, game. end? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are we are immersed in the jungle for over a month. Now, one of the things I did in prep, though, is Holy I flew moly. into the Amazon jungle. Yeah, but I flew into the Amazon jungle and uh, and practiced survival in the Amazon jungle before going on to uh, this show. So I could, because I've done, I've done cold survival, you know, solo trek in the arctic circle of yeah. hiked to the mountains of rwanda looking at the silverback rails but never jungle survival yeah. and uh, of course they had us eat really really nasty things but that's <laughs> part of it oh, well, oh. well when you get home though you're even more grateful for everything and all the creature comforts that we have when you when you get back home after a month like that i'm sure and i lost 25 pounds so i was looking a whole lot better too there you go there you go that's that, you don't and your your uh, failure scenario is I could die out here, so you know what? This is not bad. Like this, anything it, besides dying is a win. Yeah. You know, worse than that. In all honesty, for me, because I, I, fortunately or unfortunately, I have no fear of death. Yeah, but I'm representing all the Boy Scouts of America. Sure. The entire world is judging Boy Scouts based on me. Yeah, on yeah. camera. 24 seven for over a month while starving, while sleep deprived, deprived under all that pressure. Now there's a challenge for you. That yeah. was my failure scenario. Wow. Wow. Love it. Love it. Cool. So my listeners know I'm an avid reader. I, I love to devour self-help, um, self-improvement, business books. I love business biographies. Is there a book that you could recommend? Obviously, and you can't pick your own. That's cheating. Um, but yeah. But a, a book that you could recommend, Terry, that when you finished it and you set it down, you know, you realized, I am going to think about this differently. I'm going to act differently. I'm going to set a goal differently. I'm going to approach my work differently. And I'm sure you've read many. Is there one, though, that really sticks out that you would recommend to the listeners of this show? So I, I love reading stories of people overcoming. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love that. Plus a lot of uh, historical biography, et cetera. Um, one of my favorite ones recently is Boys in the Boat. You know, they just made a movie out of it as well. Yeah, that's right. They did. Yeah. 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 What what an amazing and it takes a lot to keep my attention, quite frankly. I'm about as ADAC as you can possibly get. But that one, I, I love those stories because they remind me no matter what my background is, that I'm never going to grow up to be anything, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That you can. And those stories yeah. inspire me. And I think what we all need most of anything is inspiration. We've got the knowledge. Come on. We got the knowledge. We just need to be inspired. So yeah. Read, watch, devour, listen to anything that inspires you, like this podcast. Awesome. Awesome. Um, a couple last questions. So you've lived a very interesting life to, to, to date and, uh, and, and a full life. But let's say we get to the end of your life and um, we're at your funeral and you're looking down from above and, and a, a, a loved one is reading your eulogy, but he or she is only allowed to pick three words, um, three descriptive words that describe the life you lived or the impact you had on the world. What three words, descriptors, if you will, do you hope that person chooses to represent the life that you're trying to live? He really cared. Hmm. It's, it's not about accomplishments, guys. You know, it's, it's not about all of the fancy things that, you know, that you read in, in people's bios. It's about caring for other people, the ones close for you, uh, the ones who can never affect your life positively in, in any way at all. 
It's about caring. It's about making a difference in people's lives. And I'll say animals' lives too. I'm an animal free. So yeah. he really Love cared. Love it. Love it. And then Terry, last question before we, we uh, share with the listeners how they can get a hold of you and follow you and find you. Uh, if you were given, if I gave you a magic wand tonight and I said, Terry, you wave that magic wand tonight before we go to sleep, before you go to sleep, and you're going to wish for one change in the world, the way the world is, the way the world people are, the way the world operates, however it is, you get to make one material change to the way things are, and it'll be that way forever. When we wake up tomorrow, what will it look like when we wake up tomorrow? Understand it. We understand each other. We listen to listen, not listen to talk, not listen to convince, but we listen to listen with an open mind. We try to understand where other people are coming from, other race, color, creed, religion, socioeconomic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and don't get me wrong too much. I'm hardcore on a lot of things, but it's amazing when you travel the world uh, and not just the fancy tourist spots, but get into the back villages of Rwanda and Malawi or wherever and mm -hmm. really get to know people, people with different beliefs than you, different attitudes, different looks at life. It's amazing how the understanding can, can open up and we can actually start working together with each other instead of against each other. Why well, wouldn't that yeah. be crazy? Maybe we could actually uh, make a difference in this world and save where we're going, quite frankly. Yep. Amen. Amen. Most important question. Um, you're just a, you are a ball of fun and uh, I love how you talk with so much humility and uh, yet you've accomplished so much. Uh, so such a sought out speaker now on the, on the speaking circuit and uh, your book's doing well. How can people find you, follow you, be part of your journey? Just, just connect with you. Yeah. Well, thanks for asking. Of course. Um, you know, terryelfossum.com, www.terryelfossum.com. I'm not that imaginative, so I'm sorry. That's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course, all my social media uh, and everywhere. Get on my email list that's on there. And for those that are serious about reaching their goals, I do have a, a coaching program that uh, it's it's kind of exclusive because I don't want to just, you know, have a million people and not really help you. Um, but that's on terryelfossum.com. Of course, LinkedIn is a good place. And I'm always looking to uh, for, for keynote speaking opportunities, of course. Okay. Great. Um, we'll put all that in the show notes uh, on all the, the wherever we distribute this this podcast. So YouTube and Spotify and Apple and all that. We'll put it we'll put it all on there so people can just click right on that. I just want to say thank you. I'm uh, I'm very appreciative of you coming on. And this is one of those podcasts. If 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 I were Joe Rogan, we'd be going three and a half hours because I know you have like amazing <laughs> stories. And, and and I really felt I cheated the audience a little bit myself because I, I we don't have the time to go super deep into some of these but maybe we'll have you on again to just to, to get into some of the the weeds on these because it just seems like so much fun so thank you so much for coming on today well roger thanks truly honestly thank you for having me i appreciate it. appreciate the opportunity to to meet some more people and uh to hopefully you know make a difference in their lives as so many people have made a difference in my life so keep doing what you're doing it's fantastic and for everybody out there you got this, man. You got this. Keep at it. You got this. Get out there and go get them. Thank you for tuning in to the Thrive More podcast. Don't forget to take a look at the show notes for any of the resources that we mentioned during the podcast. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you have access to the latest and the greatest. You can connect with me on any of the socials at Real Roger Martin. And be sure to check out our website, thrivemorebrands.com. There you'll find information on the brands we support and information on franchising. Thanks again for tuning in.